welcome adventure to Asmodea. Okay, here we are at dndbeyond.com. And we're going to take a relatively quick look here at uh, dndbeyond.com and all of the features set. But before we do that, uh, obviously, we have to ask you, please, to hit that subscribe button and, and the like button. And if you could make a comment as well, that helps the algorithm to help us grow this channel. We have so much content uh, coming at you and hopefully getting it out as quickly as possible. I just did a video on another player resource called Hero Forge, and uh, you'll see a little card pop up about that. Uh, it's in our player resources playlist, <clears throat> which uh, it, it, as of this recording is, is small, but it's going to grow quick, trust me. So please uh, do that for us. It'd be great. So uh, dndbeyond.com, if you have not been here, you're missing out. And I'm kind of shocked at some of the people that I know that that I mentioned it to, and they said, what is that? And they didn't realize that it was even here. Um, it's pretty shocking. I use it all the time, even as, even as an experienced player. Uh, but uh, for new players, this is a fantastic resource. And this is the authentic and authorized uh, Wizard of the Coast outlet for official D, D game information and content. Uh, so you know whatever you get from here is officially licensed uh, and and uh, has the exact same content. If you buy a digital book here, it's the exact same content that you would get in the printed version of the book. So uh, and and the adventures. So uh, there's a lot here, obviously, and they sell quite a few things. There's a lot here that's free. Uh, there are some things that uh, do require payment, obviously, for books and adventures and things. Uh, and they do offer a subscription that does give you some benefits, and I'll show you that in a second. But for new players, this is a fantastic place to start. Uh, this new player guide not only kind of walks you through all of the different uh, parts and pieces of, of D and D Beyond for a new player, but it it's a fantastic source of D and D information itself. So uh, just this basic rules uh, here, I think, are pretty amazing uh, that I, or I find it amazing that a lot of people have never read this. This is really the very beginning of D and D and how to play and what it's about and the different characters and classes and, and scores. And I mean, everything that you need to begin playing, uh, how to play, how you're affected by things, uh, you know, creating your, your combat encounters. I mean, all this stuff uh, is, is the, the basics of D and D. So if you haven't read it, take a look. I think you'll, you'll find it's pretty Pretty impressive. Uh, but going back to the main screen here, uh, they obviously have a lot of uh, data about some of these really cool new up and coming adventures. But I'm going to just kind of touch on some of the basics uh, here across the top uh, and why I use this and how useful some of these tools are. I'm not going to dive deep. Uh, I'm going to let you do that because you should really learn about that. But there are a couple things I'm going to touch on that are kind of cool. So first of all, let's look at this uh, collections tab. Now, this is really all of your stuff in dndbeyond.com. It is your collection of your characters, your campaigns that you're involved in, your encounters, if any, uh, homebrew stuff. And if you're not involved in homebrew, I, I have never really been involved in homebrew. Uh, but if you're not involved in it, more and more people are getting involved. And now I'm beginning to realize that there are times that would have been super useful for me. Uh, but it's really a collection of things that you have created that are unique for you. So you could, you know, create a spell or a monster or a magic out of background, whatever it is. Uh, and you can base that and you can even look at uh, some of the, the items to base it off of. Uh, you can base these items off of existing content that's, that's already out there. Um, that's official content and then tweak it and make it your own. And then you save it and now you can share it and use it in other campaigns, assuming the GM allows you to do that. Uh, and it, it's awesome. You can share it with your friends and it, it, I mean, it's almost, they're almost like trading cards. It's kind of cool. So, uh, that's homebrew. Then there's my dice. I'll show you this real quick. Um, these are the digital dice that you own that are uh, available to use here at dndbeyond.com. Uh, I just, I, I got this as part of my, uh, signing up for something. I don't remember what it was, but, uh, this is kind of this red sparkly die. Uh, then you get the white ones and then the standard black ones. Uh, but you use those here, and I'll show you those in a second so you'll be able to see how, how they're used. 
So let's kind of touch on characters. So this is a list of my characters that I have at D&D Beyond. Um, and uh, Lord Gareth is clearly not level two anymore. He's been around for many years, but uh, I, I think uh, I was messing with something and I, I leveled him up here. But uh, And for those of you that have seen the other videos, you know Gendon, he's popping up in all sorts of different maps. Uh, I use Gendon and King Kabaz as kind of NPCs that I bring into uh, games with lower level players just to kind of help them out, give them a little buffer so that if they, you know, run into an encounter that's, you know, and, and they don't, you know, maybe it's their first encounter and they have no idea what to do uh, and they do everything wrong because we do as new players uh, a lot of times. Uh, this is kind of the buffer characters that I use for that. Also, King Carbaz, I, I have him signed up in a test campaign here on D&D Beyond. I just wanted to do that so you could see what it looks like there. So let me just kind of jump into a character sheet and show you some of the cool features and why you might want to use this. Um, this character sheet is amazingly complex, but it's so thorough because when you go to create a character, and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute, uh, when you go to create a character, you, you kind of can't miss anything using, you know, the tools here at D&D Beyond. Um, so everything gets covered, all of your skill, your senses, your, your, uh, any of your proficiencies, uh, any of your features and traits. I mean, all of these things are completed because it is using official rules. And of course it's computerized. So everything's digital. Um, it, you know, your defenses, uh, and if you had any conditions, now you'll notice when I click on these things, um, I can, for example, if I'm charmed, I can click on that. And now it knows I'm charmed on my sheet. Uh, and I can even, uh, look at the details about that. And in some cases there, and I'll, you'll see it in a second, in some cases you can even modify some of the information there. Uh, here's your exhaustion level. I mean, it, it's just, it's incredible the detail that you get here. But if you just want to know about deception, click on deception and it tells you, oh, you know, all of the, the information about it and your character's level uh, of bonus or proficiency modifiers for that uh, particular skill. And if you need to overwrite it, you have the ability to do that here. So just a, a plethora of detail. And what's even neater about some of these is, uh, for example, if you uh, have certain features or traits, if you come here, it actually even shows you what page in the player handbook to go to if you want to read up on more detail about that. Or you can click on it and kind of get the basic detail here. So again, super, super detailed and, and fantastic. Now, lastly, uh, not lastly, uh, I mentioned the dice. So the digital dice you can use to roll here. So if you're, if you're playing a game, uh, say a tabletop game, you're actually playing in a tabletop uh, and you want to use this as your character sheet uh, and, and keep track of everything here, which is great. You can do that. And the cool part is you can roll your dice. So if I want to do a saving throw for wisdom, I click on this and there we go. And it pops up with a wisdom save of 17. It includes all my modifiers, bonuses, everything that, that needs to be there. Uh, if I want to do a, uh, now nah, let, let's do, it. We'll, we'll do this dexterity. So you click on the dexterity modifier and it, it throws a, a roll up for you right there. So it, I, it's super useful. Uh, also, if you need to do a short rest, long rest, you know, you can do that here and it will act accordingly. Uh, if you need to go back and, and go into the builder, you can go here. But uh, and, and lastly, now lastly, about this sheet is the sharing capability. And this is the coolest feature for those of you that play on virtual tabletops with people like me that, that run, uh, for example, Foundry. Uh, and what you can do is you click on that and it gives you a unique URL to this player character sheet that you can share with anybody. They can see it. They can't modify it, but they can see it. And if you share it with a GM like me that's running Foundry, I can import your character, including your avatars and all of this data right into the game. So you don't have to go in and type everything out and try to create your character uh, again or, or fill, it, fill all the information out again. It'll just suck it right into uh, the game. And then I assign that, that character to you and voila, you're ready to go with your real stats. And I think that's just really awesome. So that's a player character sheet. Uh, and, and 
even cooler, you can print it if you want. You can export it as a PDF and you can print it. Uh, but I love this layout, especially this the, the fact that they don't make the the rolls themselves huge and the modifiers small. I, as a GM, I'm more interested in the modifiers than I am in these numbers. So it's incredible uh, what this can do. So take a look at it, play around with it. Go create a character. It's free to create a character. I think you can get, I, I'm a free account. I don't, I'm not subscribed. Uh, but if you uh, have a free account, I think you can do up to six uh, for free, which is usually enough for most people, uh, unless you're really intense. <laughs> so, uh, okay, enough for characters. Uh, campaigns. So I just have one test campaign that I created in here, um, and uh, I'll show you the campaign. It's just this is just all test information. Uh, this is my view as a DM. I can make DM notes that are public. Um, I can create private notes for just me. Uh, and this is the link that is unique to this campaign that you can give to other people who are, they have to have a D&D &D Beyond account, uh, again, which is free, uh, that they can use and then they can participate with their character if they like in that campaign that you're playing right here. So it's kind of a hybrid of of uh, tabletop and virtual tabletop. It's pretty much the same, same in deal. Uh, so back to collections. Now, encounters, I'm not gonna go into this because Many of you don't really need to do this yourself because you're a player. Uh, for those of you that are, are DMs or GMs, uh, this is a great place for you to be able to create an encounter for your players that's balanced for your players. And what I mean by that is that you can select the number of players, the levels that they're at, and then once you start looking at the, the various monsters that you're gonna include or NPCs that you're gonna include, um, it will balance those based on uh, the strengths and, and features of that particular group and the strengths and features of those monsters that they're going to encounter. And it will give you a clue as to how hard or easy that is. As GMs, we try to balance, you know, so that we can, we're not throwing, you know, level two players up against a level 45 monster. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. We don't want you to get killed off right away because that's no fun for you. It's no fun for us. Uh, it, it's kind of pointless. So we try to balance those encounters. So it's a little tough and you got to think, but you're not going to get slaughtered right out of the gate. So that's where you create them. And it's really, really powerful. Uh, now, actually, you know what? I will show you just one quick thing about this. When you go to create an encounter and I'll, I'll create a new one here. Uh, you'll see that it, it basically gives you pretty much every monster type there is, but you'll notice where this monster comes from, that data for this monster. And it, I mean, this shows you level of difficulty and I mean the whole bit. So if I look at my party, which is, you know, level five, level five, level five, level five, if I, you know, create a, a preset and I can add different characters and what have you, uh, this then balances what I select here. And you'll see if I start adding these, like that's just deadly. I mean, there's no point in even putting my party up against this creature because it'll just slaughter him. So th this is what it's all about. But here you can click on this character or this uh, monster and it will take you to information about the monster. But if you don't own the content that gives you that data, it won't show it to you. It will try to sell it to you, which makes total sense. I mean, you know, hey, they're, they're not, if they gave it away, nobody would ever buy it. So I don't own this. And so it's going to show me hey, you need to buy that if you want to be able to get that data. And I think that's totally fair. N nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I don't believe I even own the monster manual. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it it tells you that you have to visit the marketplace in order to use that that content. So um, th that's fair and that's that's understandable. But I think that that this tool itself is is just really cool. All right, so on to homebrew. I'm not going to even go into these. I'll let you do that. All right, so game rules. Uh, this again is kind of a, um, a, a plethora of info. And if you click on these items, assuming you own the content for these items, it will take you right to the content information for that particular item. Now I do have this information because it's part of the player handbook and I own the player handbook. So it's going to take me into that content. But if I go here, uh, sorry, rules, and I go to Artificer, uh, I don't own that content. So it's not going to show me that. It's going to ask me to purchase it, which I think is fair. Now, uh, one kind of quick note. 
uh, whenever you purchase any of these here, if you do purchase them, unless it tells you otherwise, you are getting a digital version, meaning it's available to you here on the website. If you if it tells you you're going to get a hard copy, then you will get a hard copy, but otherwise you do not. So that's an important distinction to, to know about. All right, so game rolls, you can go through all that stuff, and this is just kind of quick links to some of those items. Sources. Here's all your, your sources. So these are all the books that you can purchase. Um, and the adventures, and I own a ton of these because I run them. Uh, but the these are direct links to the source books themselves. Now, I own the player's handbook, so I'm going to click on that. And this is essentially exactly what you see uh, in the player's handbook itself. It'll even give you the ability to view the cover art on it. Uh, so uh, this... It, it, Word for word is the same information as you get in the in the hard bound book. Uh, I, I guess with maybe some exceptions, and that is maybe some updates that they have done or corrections or uh, what have you. But uh, other than that, it's the same content. So if you click into something, it'll take you directly to it, and your you know shows you what chapter you're in, all the information. But then you can just click back here on the the uh, table of contents, and boom, it'll take you back there. Now, if I don't own one, say I I don't own the monster manual. It'll show me the the uh, table of contents, but if I click on something, it's going to tell me, "Hey, you got to you got to purchase that. Uh, you don't own it." So, uh, just a, a word to the wise. Uh, that's why you would see that. Um, now, tools. Your character builder. This is this encounters is basically what I just showed you from before. And yes, they have a cool mobile app, uh, which is really neat. And if you're a a GM and you have a Discord server like we have you can add this bot to your server and you can actually play right on the server. It's text-based, uh, so it's not as pretty as, as doing something like Foundry, but it, it does offer you the bot. But what re I think is the coolest part of this is the character bu builder. Now, it kind of gives you three ways to build a character. Uh, the standard is literally a walking through, you know, each thing step by step. And if you click this little box, it'll kind of give you extra help for, for beginners, but, uh, but it literally walks you through step by step. The next is the quick build, which is not really quick. <laughs> it still asks you a lot of questions, which, you know, is important because that's what you need to know to be able to build out characters properly. But uh, but it's it's quicker than the standard version. And randomized, I've never used. I, I have never really tried it. Um, I guess I probably should. But uh, I, my understanding is, is it just kind of generates a random character based on a few small questions that you ask. And then it, you know, throws out the... the sheet for you uh, so but using just you know come in here and use one of these create it just create a character you're not going to break anything and uh you'll see how powerful this really is and what it, it, it makes you aware of that you otherwise uh may not be uh so i'm not going to go through any more of these uh items here the marketplace really quick i'll show you uh you have their store uh but i what i think is amazing and i just noticed this the other day is this legendary bundle for eight hundred dollars, you would get all forty-five official, official digital digital source books and adventure books that are here. For eight hundred bucks, that's a steal, and that's as of this recording. So I don't know if that's going to change. Uh, it, it isn't nine hundred dollars worth of value. It's way, way, way more than that. So I can tell you, I've spent a ton here. But anyway, uh, these bundles are available to you. Uh, I think uh, here's the digital dice. I think is probably the only other thing I'll show you here, other than subscriptions. These are the digital dice you can buy. And this is the one that I think is so darn cool. I, I, I like this one just because of what it does here. <laughs> I just think that's interesting. So what you can do with digital dice is amazing. Uh, otherwise, um, the only other thing is subscriptions, which you can get in the store as well. And uh, there are some reasons for wanting to subscribe here, I think. Uh, as of this recording, it's basically $3 and $6. Uh, I think what's probably the most uh, powerful about that is this ability to share the unlock content. And what that means is share content you purchased with other players in D&D Beyond. So you can't just give it to everybody out in the world. Uh, you can share it with other players that you're playing uh, in a, a, an encounter, or I'm sorry, in a an adventure with, a campaign with here at dndbeyond.com. So uh, I think that's cool though. That's great because then if you've got, you know, other players that, that have a, a an account, then they can jump in and, and see that content. So uh, that's kind of it in, in a nutshell, folks. Um, I, obviously, they have you know lots of media information. They've got their forums, uh, and uh, they they're doing Twitch. We're going to be doing that pretty soon as well. Uh, but 
you know, it, this is a great resource. And if you haven't used it, you should. Um, even if it's just, you know, to create a character really well and then have that character uh, sent to a GM that's, that's you know, using Foundry or Roll20 or whatever and kind of suck that information directly in so you don't have to do so much work to play. So now I will make one shameless plug for myself. <laughs> and that is, I have just started using uh, startplaying.games. And it's not .com, it's .games. I just joined this and I, I, I never really kind of put myself out there uh, online uh, in, in any of these sources because I always had plenty of games to, to go into. But this is kind of a great resource because you it, it puts together players with games and, and DMs. Uh, it, it's just kind of a, a source to do that, but, and you can see, I'll show you mine. Um, I have my, my adventure right here. Uh, this is, this is my adventure. It's, it's basically a beginning adventure. Um, it's just getting ready to start. Um, I've got two out of the four, yeah, two out of the four seats filled on it already. So basically, uh, I charge $7 and 50 cents per, per player per session. Uh, and we've got several, you may have seen this after this is already over with. Uh, but we have several uh, of uh, these sessions already pre-planned and pre-scheduled. We may add more. But this is a basic adventure for uh, new players, pretty much. And I, you can always find me here at startplayer.games by looking for DM Lee. Uh, I only have one review because I just started here. I clearly haven't just started at D&D or, or being a, a game master. But uh, I just started here at Start Players. Uh, sorry, start playing dot games. So give it a look, you know, have a, have a, a peek. I think it's uh kind of, kind of neat. Uh, what, what all you'll find there. There's so many different things. Anyway, that is D and D beyond a uh, quick look. And if you have any questions, comments, please, you know, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to them as quickly as I can. Uh, obviously hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so that you get notified of all this new content that's coming out. And uh, there's going to be a ton, so hopefully it'll be super helpful for you. And if it's not, tell us. Tell us what would be, and we'll be happy to uh, to jump in there and create one. So with that, uh, as always, when you're adventuring, be careful, be safe, and be kind. Peace.